Hello, my peeps. We are live. I got to start doing this at five so I can say live at five. Uh, we're live at six. <laughs> Doesn't sound nearly as much fun. Um, I am just going to do a few more things and see if I can't get the comments to show up. And oops, there's one more volume I forgot to turn down. There we go. All righty. Welcome to Show and Tell with Tracy. This is Treat Holders Part One. We are doing treat holders part two on Thursday. Um, I have so much stuff prepped and ready to show you. Um, I had a two hour nap this afternoon. I did not plan to have a two hour nap. I just sort of, the dog fell asleep, I fell asleep and that was that. Um, and so then when I woke up, I was like, oh, I gotta get stuff ready. And did I get stuff ready? So hello, Dana. So I'm going to uh, give everybody a minute or two just to uh, get logged on. Um, yeah, stuff. I have so much stuff. You know what else I realized as I was getting ready to do this? And I, I start making a few notes because I'm, I'm starting to get smarter now, or at least I like to think I'm getting smarter now. Um, and if I'm going to, um, if I'm going to do something that's in a blog, I'm trying to take pictures as I go. Because doesn't that, doesn't that make sense? So that's what I was originally thought, okay, I got to take a couple pictures if there's stuff I don't already have pictures of as I go, which made me think pictures. And I was like, see, last time I took pictures for my blog. And as soon as I said that in my head, hey, I took pictures for my blog, I realized that I totally never finished my blog on the weekend. So the one that was supposed to be there on Saturday, um, I will finish, and I don't usually do my newsletter, but I will finish tonight or tomorrow. I'll do it as soon as I can. Um, because yeah, I just totally spaced. I was so busy getting ready for the for the market that I totally spaced on on uh, on doing it. Um, I like to try to put all the different measurements and stuff in there. So for this one, um, I, I think that's where I will be on the weekend will be just all the different measurements and stuff. Um, I'm going to show you though. So I'm doing two things at once. Can you, I'm not even looking up. That's not very nice. Um, I'm going to show you part of the, the treat holders that I teased you with. I just showed you a picture. I'm going to show you how to make them. Um, but I've also made a bunch of other ones as I was going, and then some are past ones. So some some is retired stuff. Uh, but that's just <clears throat> excuse me. That's just because uh, um, there's so many, there's so many things that you can do with this. Um, I'm having a hard time seeing the comments. Sorry, I'm distracting myself. I'm doing three things at once right now, and I probably should focus on doing one thing at once because sometimes that's sometimes that's enough of a challenge for me. Okay, what was I doing? There we go. Uh, hello, Tamara. How are you surviving? I don't know the heat, the people, the frantic, the Universal Studios. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know which one's the one that's most likely to be getting to you today. Uh, let's see. Okay, so now I got the comments up. Let's go back to the other screen so I can see what's actually live. Okay. Okay. Well, that's three minutes. So that's, I guess, ample warning. Um, hi. Welcome to Show and Tell with Tracy. I'm Tracy, your friendly neighborhood favorite publisher. I'm going to try to start doing that. I did that at the farmer's market this weekend. I started talking to the vendors on either side of me and just started talking. And I, I mean, we're four hours in when I finally um, said to the lady next door, by the way, my name is Tracy. And she said, hi, I'm Candy. So I, gotta, I have to try to get better <laughs> at introducing myself. Hello, Donna. Okay. I'm waiting for Tamara to answer and give me a little more of an update, but she could be in line for all we know. Um, waiting to see Harry Potter. You know, you never know what she's doing right now. Um, I do know she'll have a story. There's never any doubt of that. Okay, so this is the thing. I have so many, you can see like the hint of a few things here. I have so many things I don't know where to start. <laughs> I've all of a sudden hit the point of, hmm, where should I start? All right, let it, let's start with, I don't know if any of them are the easy ones, but let's just start with with the random things and we'll go through them all. And like I said, I'm not gonna necessarily decorate every one of them. I'm gonna show you the mechanics of them. And then I will put pictures and dimensions, I guess. Some things don't really have dimensions. I mean, I could tell you this is an inch and a half circle, but I cheated, used my punch. Um, and if the punches are all retired now, but whatever die is closest to whatever size you're looking for, that's the right one. So some of these may not have a lot of dimensions, but I will try to do some, some pictures. So this is our first, see if I get it to focus. This is the first one. Um, I had a bunch of these that said, um, happy Mother's Day. I see now that that's crooked. Um, 
a bunch of these that said Happy Mother's Day on them, but I decided as well that I was just going to prep a bunch of them. And then, as you may have seen me grab earlier, I always have something like this going around. <laughs> and these are all things that matched all the treat holders I made this weekend so that they could be changed to say Mother's Day, birthday, thank you, um, just for you, just because, so that they would work for whatever. Um, but yeah, in this case, I did originally start making them as Mother's Day treat, and as that is the next holiday coming up, um, that's what I was kind of focused on. So each one of these holds a Ferrero Rocher. I will tell you that when I do my treat holders, a lot of what I decide to put in them, I'm, I'm looking at price point, right? If you're giving them to a whole bunch of people, now if you're doing them for family or you're making one and it's like your favorite person in the entire world, price point is probably not an issue. But if you're making them sell at the market or you're making you know 20 of them to put around a table, you probably want to factor in what goes in the thing. And as I was prepping all of this stuff earlier, I thought, what comes first, the treat or the treat holder? Like you decide, okay, this is what I want to make someone or like, I want to give them this. So now I'm going to make something to fit it. Or do you say, oh my God, this is going to make the cutest thing. Now what will fit in it? And quite honestly, combination of both today. So we're going to start with this one, which I had originally seen it. I saw this years ago when the, when the tulip punch first came out. And honestly, I don't even remember whose it was or anything. And I apologize to the original creator because it's a genius idea. I just don't know whose it was. Uh, and it was made with Ferrero Rocher. And, and this is perfect, unless you have one person in your family who doesn't like Ferrero Rocher and complains every time you make them. But um, but these are just nice little, you know, you, you sit down to dinner, you have a nice little cute thing sitting there. And after dinner, you get to have a free chocolate. So those are made with the tulip. I'm gonna show you the first two I show you are gonna be made with the tulip builder punch. Now the stamp set for this retired, but the punch did not. And I think the reason the punch did not is because one of the tulip bundles from the mini is carrying over. And so even though it's not exactly the same, I think the two can be worked together. Yes, you're right, Donna. Okay, see Donna, you have a legit reason. Donna is allergic to hazelnuts, so she doesn't get to eat Ferrero Rocher, but I do have a substitute. I did think of you. I just got distracted by my own mess on my desk. <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> I was gonna say, here's the substitute. You can also put a Lindor in them, but you wanna know what's really funny? This Lindor that I picked up is hazelnut flavored. So how about let's not put that one in. You could also put the Lindor or the lint or I don't know. You know what, I call these lint balls. And that's probably not the most appealing name. Would you like a lint ball? But these things will also, you just have to tuck in the little Duma Flickies on the side here. Uh, that's the technical term for them in case you're wanting Duma Flickies. Um, but yeah, you can put one of these in the middle as well. So if you're allergic to the hazelnuts, go for something else. Um, I would imagine, the other thing I've, I've hit on, because people love these, these are, the, uh, these are the cookies you get on the plane. <laughs> And yes, you could you could actually put two packs of these in. Now they would stick out the top, but you could put two packs of those in too if you wanted to. So you can find something that's that fits. So this one goes together quite quickly. So that's why we're gonna start with that one, I guess. So all I did is I punched out, and I'm not gonna show you the punching because we got that. I punched out four tulips. I punched out, in this case, I punched out two leaves and a circle. And the reason I'm doing that, and we're just gonna wing it, because you know me, I like to just wing it as I go. Um, so when I made these, I made them so that they would have these nice little feet and I, I punched out four and then there's a circle on the bottom just to kind of hide the mechanics, but, um, cause I thought it would look nicer on the table. It made a bigger footprint on the table. But when you try to put a whole bunch of these in a box, these catch on everything and they catch on each other and they take up more room and they were driving me nuts. So I decided when I put it together today, I'm going to find a different place to put the leaves. <laughs> I'm also, and you can't quite tell on the... <clears throat> Um, excuse me, I need a drink of my tea. Again, maybe we should call this tea time with Tracy. Tea time. Um, I'm using the new colors. This is Sweet Sorbet and this is Parakeet Party. And I, oh my goodness, I love these bold colors. Okay, so here's what we need to do. Now, <laughs> you can't quite, I don't think you get the quite get the scope of this. Um, I will tell you that my desk is three feet deep by six feet long. It is custom made for me by a friend who does fabulous woodwork. And it is a huge desk. And right now I have approximately, let me get my favorite ruler out. So I have about an eight inch depth right here. So I got about 16. So I have about an eight by 16 space on my desk that is not covered with stuff. <laughs> it is incredibly, incredibly full right now. Um, I have lots of projects on the go. 
So my, I'm leaning way back because my trimmer is mostly hanging off the table. So I'm, I am going to show you that we need to we need to clip the bottom of each of these flowers. We don't need to clip. We need to score the bottom of each of these flowers so that we can make our little thing. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways to do it. I'm putting the tip of the flower, so you can see where my finger is here, at one and a half. So I'm going to put each flower, it's not a straight edge, but it's still going to work. So I'm going to put each flower at one and a half. So I'm scoring off, I don't know, three eighths on the bottom or something. I'm just going to move my finger out of the way when I close that. So that's one way to do it, right? I'm scoring off that much. And it, this is just so it folds easier, right? Now, I'm not going to do all of them on there because I just don't have the room for it. <laughs> my favorite little tool, my little mini, and, and like I said, I think I've said this before. Part of the reason that I think this is one of my favorite little tools is because um, it takes up so much less space on my desk. So now you can do the same thing on this one. I'm, I'm just making sure I remember what me measurement I had before. You can use this little tool or any kind of straight edge you have, um, like the edge of a desk. If you have the crisp edge of a desk, if you have a rounded table, it's not gonna work. But if it's a crisp edge, it's gonna work. So I'm going back to the one and a half again. I'm just holding this down and I'm just gonna fold it over. You can't really see because this thing is in the way. Let's see, I'll do the other one. Now you can, there's nothing saying that you can't um, I also just realized that I don't think that's quite enough folded. Uh, maybe it is. Um, you can just fold the edge over, but I find with something this little, I, my fingers just aren't nimble. The, the smaller the edge you're folding, I find the harder it is to fold it and get a nice clean edge on it. So I prefer to use like the edge of a table or something. So there we go. I, I've got this, and the, and this is this measurement is going to be different for, depending on what you're doing. But in this case, it works to go to one and a half, and I'm getting just that little bit of a lip, and then I'm just kind of pushing on it. So I'm pushing on it. I get my crease, and then when I take it off, I can just fold it over. I was slightly crooked because I was doing this at an angle. Um, and here's my last little trick for you. And this one, I'm just going to cheat because I don't actually have any idea what this measurement is. So we'll just go like this. The other thing is if you get a good ruler, now this is my favorite ruler, boom, boom, boom. but it's flimsy. But the reason I like it is because it's got inches on one side and centimeters on the other side. And when you flip it, it's got centimeters on the top and inches on the bottom. So, you know, sometimes when you try to measure something and then you have to turn it and it, yeah, I love this thing, but it does not work for what I'm doing because it's flimsy. This little metal one, which also has cork on it. And the reason I have this cork one is is because it lifts the ruler off. So if you ever have to draw a line, you want to lift your ruler off the paper so it doesn't smudge on the edge of the ruler, right? I have rulers for everything. But this metal one flipped over so it's nice and flat works perfectly for, you can also just pick the edge of the flower up and fold it against a ruler. And then if you need to, just give it another little crease. So there's three different ways to fold the edge of your flower, in case you were wondering. And that will actually work for all of the scoring we're going to do today. Score it on the on the scoring machine. You could score it on the scoring table, but that there's no way that's fitting on this desk right now. Um, score it against a ruler. Score it against the edge of a straight edge, whichever works. So now what we're doing is we're gonna we're gonna put these four tulips on. Where'd my little guy go? Here we go. Just like the four points of this thing. So this this basically, this little circle that I'm doing is the same size as the Ferrero Rocher. So that's why we're just gonna put this on the edge. And it really doesn't matter um, if you can see a little bit of the green, I don't think that's the end of the world. Um, it's, not gonna, it's not gonna make a huge difference. But what I'm trying to do is get my glue to work. What I'm trying to do is I'm just gonna put a little glue on this tip and I'm gonna do it so that most of the flower is on there. I'm just gonna give it a little trim afterwards. And I'm gonna do this on all four. And for whatever reason, I find that it is easier to go opposites. So when I'm trying to square things up, so if you go, those two, these two are opposite each other. I really did get that one quite crooked, there we go. And then these two opposite each other, you have a better chance of <clears throat> one of my favorite words, not making everything all kitty wumpus. Um, in this case, I guess if you really wanted to, you could try to use, and I know you're you're sitting there right now saying, oh my God, Tracy's making her craft and she's not using tear and tape. 
I know what you're thinking. If there was a way I could, I would. But in this case, you don't really need a lot of the flour to hook over. You want to leave it as tall as possible. And the little bit that is there, I mean, I could put tear and tape on it, but it would be a little fussy. So it is just a bit easier to, in this case, to use white glue. This might be the only one I'm using white glue on. I think every other one that I made, I used tear and tape for. <clears throat> okay, so there's our four that we put on there. Now, when I had done the, when I did it, if you want to do it, I should have told you this ahead of time, just in case you were doing that with me. Um, if you want to do it this way, um, put the leaves down before you put the flowers on. But like I said, they, they were sticking out, they were bugging me, I don't want to do that. So here we go. Oops, I've got this now. I can't make it focus very well. There we go. Uh, that's my new focus finger now. Um, so I have a couple of them. This one is sticking out a little bit, but maybe that'll either be the back or I'll just trim it. So I've got them just glued on across from each other. Now in a perfect world, oh yeah, see this one, this must've been the last one I put on. I put that one like way over to the side, but that's okay. I don't want to wreck it, so I'm just going to trim it so it's not sticking out like that. Um, in a perfect world, I would actually let this dry, but time is of the essence. So here's what I was thinking with these this time. I thought with the flowers, oh, and I think it will work just fine. Okay, so my second favorite adhesive to tear and tape, blue dots. Okay, so I'm going to... I'm going to put the glue dot. I'm going, to, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to show you. So I'm putting the glue dot on the side of the flower that I'm sticking. Like, so I'm putting this on the front of one of them and the back of the other one. That'll make sense in a second. Like I said, I'm winging this because I wanted to put the flowers in a different place and I hadn't figured out, or the leaves in a different place. Okay, so I've got the glue dot on the front of this leaf and I'm just tucking it in on this flower and I'm going to attach it. Now on this one, I put the leaf on the back. So what I ended up with is I've got a leaf on either side, right? And it doesn't look very good in doing it like this, but trust me, it looks better. Um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna move this, sorry, now that I said that. Uh, I'm gonna move this to the front because uh, when I tie the ribbon on, I'm gonna lose it out of the back. Okay, so I'm putting this, like I said, we're winging it. Mm -hmm. I'm putting the glue down on the front of the piece of cardstock. And then I'm tucking it in to the flower. So now I've got my green leaves, oops. But I don't have such a big production going with them sticking out all over the place. So this is, so this is what I do. So I've got my whole thing done. Like I said, let's pretend we let it dry. Um, and then you put your Ferrero Rocher in. And then how you keep it in, is with the piece of ribbon. So in this case, I am using this white crinkly ribbon because it looks, oops, it looks pretty. Knock that over. Uh, Rascal is trying to join me in the craft room tonight. That's helpful. So this is all you have to do. Put your Ferrero Rocher and once you've got everything all, um, all assembled and, and like I said, generally would give it enough time to dry, that would be an ideal thing. And then you're just putting this in and kind of pulling it snug. One thing I found out about this ribbon, a bonus to this ribbon, is you know when you tie something and then as soon as you let go of the pressure on it, boom, it slides back out again. This ribbon actually holds pretty well, so it is much easier to tie a bow with than I imagined. Um, so I'm going to tie this bow, which I can no longer see where the other piece is. There we go. Doing things on camera when you have to do them at a different angle than you're used to, is sometimes it just proves too challenging. Okay, so there's my pretty bow that then needs a little floof. Give it a little floof and a little trim. The other thing I like about this ribbon, um, I have ribbon scissors that I use because most of the ribbon and twine doesn't cut as well with the paper scissors. Like it does if you strictly use them for that, but as soon as you start cutting paper with your ribbon scissors, it doesn't cut as well. Um, but this stuff cuts quite easily. So let's pretend that we are giving this to somebody. See, here, here's the thing, I think. I think these are great table treats. I think these are great treats 
um, to just leave on someone's desk. Uh, I think it's a great treat. I gave something similar to this to the people at Starbucks the one time, my little baristas that I would, used to stop when I was still working um, pre-pandemic, this is a while ago now. Um, and I used to uh, <clears throat> make treats for my son's class. And then I had extra ones and I gave them to the, the baristas that made me my morning chai. Um, and they were so thrilled to get it. It didn't even matter what it was, just something little. So these ones, just a nice little thank you. Again, what is my issue with Cricut? So there you go. Thank you. My ribbon's covering it a little bit. I don't put I don't put embellishments on these, but you could. Um, generally, I just put like there's a little bit of ribbon um, and then just whatever little thank you. And all I did was, this is also a retired punch that I will never get rid of. Um, but there you go. See, and so either way, whichever way you decide to do them with the leaves out or the leaves up, um, it's just an easy way to make a little for a little shape, right? But, and it's a nice little, a nice little thought for someone. Okay, I'm gonna whip through some of these because I'm trying to do this. I don't, I don't have my, my standing seven o'clock live, but I do have a video at seven o'clock live to, you know, catch. So, or sorry, at seven o'clock. Um, so I will try to keep this down to an hour. I'm sure you have things to do with your time too. Okay, so here's my other one that I made with the tulips. Um, and this one, I, I don't actually think I copied from anybody. I, I think I just winged this. It's based on, I've made a lot of similar items. So, and I will show you something with, with the punch. Um, I, had, I had another idea, but I don't actually own the punch. So this is the same idea. I punched out two leaves and, and a tulip for the front, two leaves and a tulip for the back. Um, and then I just put the little holder in the middle. So I'm gonna show you how I did that. But before I show you how I do it, I'm gonna show you how versatile this particular thing is. You can find any kind of a punch, or I'll show you a die cut at the very end if there's time, um, and do this with it. Okay, so this is the, the tulip, which I will tell you somewhere on my desk. Oh, there it is. Um, I originally made these to fit these Tic Tacs. These are like the most adorable thing of Tic Tacs. And as it turns out, there's eight Tic Tacs in this little container. Now, you used to get this big, huge plastic container full of these little guys, and there was 60 of them. And it was about 30, 32 dollars, which made these Tic Tacs about 50 cents each, which was a reasonable price point for what if you're doing, you know, for certain things. Um, like I said, with family, if you want to pay a buck each, that's fine. Because these things are now about $65 to get the same container of 60 of them. So they're now up to about a buck each. At one point, you could get them in the duty-free shop at the airport, and they were a uh, same thing, like about $30. Um, I think I bought them in American dollars once, but they were less. They were maybe like 20 bucks American, which probably still equates to $30 Canadian. So originally these were designed for that. But then when these got expensive, I found these. So these are the same idea. These Tic Tacs, there are four of them in just one of these little bags, and they're just little cellophane bags. But two of them with a little bit of, a little bit of, you know, gentle pressure on the cellophane edges of these squares, two of these will fit in here. So you end up with the same eight Tic Tacs you had before. You just end up with them in two packages, which maybe in the end is good. It's two servings, right? Or four servings. I don't know. I don't actually eat Tic Tacs, so I don't, I don't know how many you'd eat at once. They're small. It seems to me you'd like throw four in your mouth, but who knows? So that's what goes in here. Now, depending on what else you're putting in here will depend on, on how much you can do, but it, it's it's half, half of the problem is what are you putting in here and how wide can you make this and how wide can you make it across the front, right? So this was the tulip. Um, this was one of the ones I had, this is where I found my little guy. This is one of the ones I had from before. I absolutely loved this set. This was 2020. I was starting to get ready to make these for Easter. So we had oval dies then and I just trimmed them off flat on the bottom so that they would sit. And then I absolutely loved the stamp set. Um, what was in it? There was a bunny, a chick, and something else. I had so, oh, and a lamb, I think. I had so much fun coloring these guys. So I just put them in front of the egg to make it Easter like. But you'll notice it's the same thing. There's two other with the little dude in between. Um, I made a teacup. I'm going to show you the teacup today. That's what I got prepped. So I made a teacup. And we're going to experiment a little bit with the other one to see how, um, to see how, or to show you a, I'm not going to experiment. I, I'm going to show you a slightly different version. Oops, I keep going off. Because this one, I don't know if you'll notice right off the bat. I made it out of the sparkly paper, which means make sure to flip it over so the backside cuts the opposite way of the die. But I made it so that it would fit these, like two of the nuggets. 
I didn't finish decorating. I just made enough that, to give you the idea of what it was. But I had to cut this off because the die is originally rounded. And if you make it rounded, the teacup just rolls over on its side. So I had to cut it off. Well, what happens if you can't cut it off? That's what I'm going to show you. But nonetheless, there's a teacup. And that has something different in it as well. And then I still have this punch too because I loved it so much. And I, I assume I will still be thanking my son's teachers for years to come. So this one is the apple punch, which can also, oops, I'm having a real hard time with my directions tonight, which can also make a pumpkin, if done correctly. Um, I made it into an apple. And yes, if you're going to give your teacher something, I'm thinking thank you. Thank you is what you give any teacher because God bless those people. Um, and in this case, I have two heart chocolates and two strawberry candies in there. And they're just kind of standing out um, and they just look cute. And this one is, uh, I think it's an inch and a quarter. And instead of making it completely square, I kind of just followed the edge of the, which we're going to do with the teacup. I just kind of followed the edge of the, of the apple. So it made it, it's smaller at the bottom, but it's a little bit bigger at the top. So I could squish more stuff in there. I can also, I have this whole thing of treats here. I can also fit a mini candy bar. Um, Halloween candy bars, mini candy bars, whatever in it. Um, in this one, there's a bit of extra space in it. So it like wobbles around a bit. But if you were doing a Kit Kat, which is flatter, or maybe depending on the candy bar, you might be able to fit two of them in. I'm not actually sure on all the different, which ones, how big they are. That just happens to be the ones I have. I love Sesame Snaps. Uh, you can get these on Amazon for fairly cheap as well. They're skinnier. So you might want to put like one of those and then maybe a candy in front of it just to keep it going. You could put Werther's in here. You could put mints in here. You could put any number of things in here. Um, there we go. I was going to say, I did, I did get the cookies to fit. Um, in this case, the cookies will fit in here. Now you see how much they stick out. Sometimes it does not work to put certain things in. So before you're hundred percent sure you're going to mass produce something, make it and stand it up because some of them will just fall over. I found these on Amazon as well. Pumpkin spice latte. I don't personally like this stuff, but I know a lot of people who do. So I thought, well, this is great, right? I can make little, and I'll show you when you see the, the mug. The thing I didn't factor in was how long this thing was. So, and this is a bit of an exaggeration, I realize, but there are certain things that you can get into a container. And in this case, I'm surprised it hasn't fallen over, but um, some of them will just make it fall over. But some things look a little bit ridiculous. <laughs> So even though this will stand up, this tiny little apple at the bottom of this huge thing is probably not the look you're going for. Now, the cookies work, right? They, even, even sticking out, they don't look that bad. Um, like I said, I would put something else in there. Um, I found these lint chocolates that were going to go in. Um, they, they, you'd have to put at least two of them in, which makes them rather expensive. They're too long. Like, they just look funny. So depending, and I, I didn't buy them to put in here. I just... I have them for a different project, but um, just to let you know that uh, yeah, that doesn't fit. These these work for certain things too, but these are too big in here. Those little Mer Merci chocolates, they might fit. They're going to stick out a bit. So th the trick is figure, like I said, this is where the whole thing came into play was what comes first, the treat or the treat holder. So if you are determined to give somebody, oh, I can, I can almost, I can almost cram these two. In. Oh, no, I can. Um, if, so if you were determined, I'm giving somebody, my mom loves York peppermint patties and thin mints and those kind of things. So if I was determined that that's what I was giving her and I was making it, I just have to make sure it works. And in this case, it does. It looks a little full to me, but it does actually work. So I don't know. Pick the treat, pick the treat holder first, whichever. Okay. So there's a whole bunch of samples of that same version. Um, if you had the right punch, I think you could make like a full size thing of Tic Tacs. And before I forget, because we know how my mind works. New catalogs out. It's live today, so I can actually open it up and show you something. Um, okay, so I'm going to show you something at the end. Well, in the teacup is dyes as well to show you different things that you can do with dyes. But I'm very much looking forward to this circle punch, uh, which would need to be trimmed. But you could make it just a shape. It doesn't have to be like it could just be like the circle versus an apple or a this or a that. The heart works. Um, the heart you would have to cut off in order to let it sit straight. You'll see that shortly. Or you have to turn the heart on its side. Uh, but So there's a couple of punches that would work. The cloud punch would likely work. If you were putting something small in it, you could have clouds and have a rainbow sticking out of it. Um, I don't, the jar punch would work. Uh, this is their tulip is down here. Oops, there we go. Um, here's the thing. If you have this essential tag, 
tombstones. Punch these out of black, make them into the box for Halloween, put a little RIP or a little skeleton or I don't know, something. These would be adorable. I think the ladybugs would work. I think if you're going to drive sparrow nuts, the porcupines would work. Uh, if you don't want to drive her nuts, call them hedgehogs because that's what they are. So like there's lots of different things you could make, uh, lots of current punches you could make these treats out of. So it's going to be whatever. But yes, you can also make them out of dyes. So here's what I was talking about when I said I had to cut the tea, the teacup off. So you notice this one is just cut flat across. And that's fine because this is just glimmer paper. And I tried the glimmer paper because I thought the glimmer paper is like a little bit sturdier. So let's see how that goes. Um, but in this case, I love, love this die that goes on top of this teacup. So if I try to cut this off straight, I'm cutting the bottom of the die off. And I am not going to like how that looks. Like that's going to bug me. So I need to be able to make this flat enough on the bottom for my container. But um, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to put it lower down. I can't I should have I should have not trimmed this. Um, and I could have showed you that as soon as I laid it down, it rolled on its side. Right. So I have to make this so that I can still put the same container on it, but not have to trim it to make it roll. So here's the trick. Lemon. Lemon is good for many things. So I'm going to make you wonder what about I'm doing with that lemon. So there's my pieces. So I've cut two pieces out. I've decorated the front somewhat. I didn't put a sentiment on it because I don't know what it's for. But I'm going to show you how to make the piece that joins the two of them, just so you can um, you can see. And then, like I said, it, it the same thing works for every one of them. It's however you do it. I do when I'm doing this on the side, the part that attaches to the container. I make it three eighths of an inch. Now, those who know me can maybe figure this out. Why do I make it three eighths of an inch? I will, I will hold my answer till I finish scoring and then I will tell you just in case you can figure out why I make it three eighths of an inch. So I'm going to score on the long side. I'm scoring three eighths of an inch. Now this next measurement is going to depend on what you're using. In the case of this cup, I can make it one inch by one inch by one inch. So I'm going to score this that way as well. And you'll see what you'll see. You'll get the gist of what I'm doing here and you'll see how this Translate. So if I was going to take that essential tag and I was going to, let's go this way. So if I was going to use that essential tag and I was going to make a, a, a tombstone treat holder out of it, and because it's taller, like that tag's about this tall to begin with. So I could take that tag and I could probably make this two and a quarter, right? The, the piece, like the thing that's going to go on here would be two and a quarter. So I would need a two and a quarter strip. I would need the width of it, which is, I'm going to say like an inch and a half, maybe. So I would have like two and a quarter by an inch and a half by two and a quarter is what I would need for here where I have one inch, one inch, one inch. And then the same three eighths inch on the side. Okay, so here's what I have. So this is basically, and you could make it into, I mean, you could make it into a box if you wanted to. Um, it's not going to work. I can't fold it with the score lines. But this is basically what's going to go between my teacups, right? And I'm making this 3 8 of an inch piece is what's going to attach it. And yes, the reason I'm making it 3 8 because then it fits my tear and tape. <laughs> if you make it a quarter of an inch, it, the tear and tape, you have to be exactly precise with it or it doesn't work. So 3 8 of an inch is the way to go. Now, maybe I shouldn't have used, um, what am I using? Starry Sky. Starry sky or starry nights? <laughs> yep, all of a sudden I forgot the answer. I'm going to cheat and look on the back of my TSP where it says what it is. Starry sky. Is that what I said the first time? Oh, I better write the first time. Okay, so I'm going to use my starry sky. Look, so I absolutely love these new papers. Oh my goodness. This is starry sky with the orchid oasis over top of it. And oh, they look gorgeous together. Okay. So if I just cut here, I'll just do this so you can see the difference. So if I just cut these, I was going to cut it the other way, but really I can just show you this way. So if I just cut these, I could make this almost into a box, right? Just like this. This is basically what I'm doing, right? And then I'm putting it between the teacups. That's as fancy as it gets, people. That's all I did on that other one. On any one of these, right? I just, I made a box and I folded it over. 
and and ha whatever dimension i did try because i i could have swore that i saw somewhere on the demo site this this teacup bundle was one of the things we could pre-order that's why i have it even though i could only order the rest of the stuff and order i did from the catalog this morning um I'm i was sure i had seen one where somebody made one of these little teacups and excuse me for reaching across my camera again and they had put the ferrero rocher in it so you would need to make this just a little bit bigger to make the Ferrero Rocher. But I already have a Ferrero Rocher thing. I wanted something with nuggets. So you could just do it like this. Now, I personally, this is this is a box fold, right? And this is the same as woodworking. You want to put your ends together and have straight ends, and it works. It's just, it's a little bulkier, right? So what I like to do is I like to miter the corners like I would in woodworking. Now, what I find easier though, instead of, because when you miter them, you're going to have 45 degree angles. Well, you're going to have roughly, because that's what it's supposed to be, but it's not like I actually measure. Um, but then you have all these crooked edges. So I find with the tear and tape, even though I'm going to sacrifice a little bit of my tear and tape, I still find it a whole lot easier to just put the tear and tape, the entire length of it. Now, we can pretend I haven't cut it yet, because I would generally do this before I cut it. So we're going to put the tear and tape the entire length of this thing. And then you grab my adhesive scissors, because now they're sticky. And I'm going to take where the corners are, and I can see the score lines here, right? So this is my score line. And I'm going to cut as best as I can. I'm going to cut a 45 degree angle this way and a 45 degree angle this way. And I'm going to do that on all four of these lines. Right? So instead of trying to match up <laughs> my tear and tape after I've cut them, I find it much easier to do it this way. Tracy's tips. Um, I don't know if I've ever told this story before, but for some reason, my sister, um, when she's being sarcastic, which, you know, hardly ever, um, she always says, uh, thanks, tips. So, so every time I say the word tips, I actually hear that, that inflection of the word tips uh, in my head. So fun fact for Tracy. Okay, so here we go. I now have my fun piece. And you can see with the folds, but you see now when you fold these over, Oh, I did actually pretty good on that one, <clears throat> given that I just like estimate without really knowing what I'm doing. Um, but you see now when you fold them over, and this is this is how you went like when you miter the corners on wood, right? Now they kind of line up and they actually are lining up pretty good on here. So now it's less bulky. So now when you put it on the side of that thing, it's a little bit flatter. So not an essential step, but how I prefer to do it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our backing off one side. Don't take it off both sides yet because it'll just drive you nuts. Now, in any of these other ones, so in this one, I put it up higher and you can see that I put it at like the widest point. That's white on white. Can you see that? Oh, focus finger, there we go. So I put it up at like the highest point. That's where I measured ahead of time to see where I could put it. Here's the other thing I would advise, sorry, squirrel, is I didn't make this one out of um, the glimmer paper because I thought, you don't have to, I mean, it's the sides, you don't really see it. But I would suggest that maybe if you're gonna make just white, that perhaps before you fold it all up, you, you stamp on it and maybe make it a little prettier or put, put some DSP or something. It is a little stark. But anyways, so normally I would put it at the highest point there. When I'm doing this, I'm putting them on the bottom, right? This one, I, I trimmed this, uh, the egg off, I'm putting it right on the bottom. So you're gonna put them in different places depending on what you're doing. So this one, like I said, on this particular version of the teacup, I put it here because I knew I could trim this flat. I actually made it, set it down thinking, will it stand? It rolled over, so I trimmed it. But this one, now that I know that, I know it's gonna do it and I know I don't wanna trim it. So I need this to be, the box to be flat on the bottom of this guy. So I am gonna take my little teacup and I'm gonna put my box down. I'll do it this way probably going to be easier on the table. Let's see if I can get this even close to straight, doing it up like this. Let me just use my, there we go. What I do when I do it on the table is I hold two of the tabs a little bit, <laughs> a little harder over here. So I pull these two little tabs and I'm kind of pulling them down a little bit so they don't automatically stick. So I can start with the bottom one first. So in this case, I'm going to put it so that one edge of this teacup is right there. Now you'll notice that it's sticking out the edge. But we will fix that shortly. But I, because I need this to be so the box is what's going to keep this thing from rolling. And I'm going to hide the box behind some stuff. 
So now I have one. Now I'm going to take this, right? So I've got the one there. I'm going to take the other one and I'm going to put it up. Oops, sorry, there, there we go. I, I know what I'm doing. I'm trying to get it so I can show you on the camera where I'm going with it. Um, put it up straight. It, you might see a little bit of the corner, but most like this tiny little bit is, is peeking out, but you're not really going to notice it so much. So I'm going to put that one up straight. And then I'm going to take this one. Here, I'll do it on the front see if it shows better. And I'm going to put it up straight, right? So now I've made my box. So now when I set my teacup down, it's not going to roll because I've got my box flat on the ground, right? And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. But you're, you're thinking to yourself, but Tracy, <laughs> And this is where the lemon comes in, because I'm just going to design it in such a way that the piece of lemon is part of my decor. It's sitting on the ground, like you had a little piece of lemon to go in your cup. You could do this with a flower, you could do it with whatever, but frankly, I think this lemon's adorable. So now, instead of just having a plain teacup with a straight bottom, I have a teacup with a slice of lemon beside it. And when I set it on the ground, ta-da, it doesn't roll over. So. The back is not going to be um, as pristine because you're actually going to see it. You can put another lemon on the back. Um, in this case, I'm just going to find a little, like I said, a little flower or even just a, the little piece of the tea tag. I, I had a little piece on my desk, which I'm trying to find. Um, there's a tiny little stamp that comes in that set that says, it's time for tea. There's a whole bunch of these tiny little ones, but this tiny little one that says it's time for tea, you can fit that on the tag and you could actually stick that in the corner as well. So there's lots of things you can do with it. Okay, but here's the part you need to, we need to do to finish this off. So we've got our front, we put the box on the front. Now we're gonna put it on the back. Now, depending what you're doing, this, this one is not a perfectly flat, like if you have sides where you can hold it like this, sometimes it's easier like to line things up. Like at this one, I can just put my fingers like this and line the tulips up. This one is a little more odd. So it's not gonna work as well. So what you're gonna have to do is you're just gonna have to give your best, I just realized I should have done something different with that tea bag, but um, you're gonna have to give your best job of lining up this tea on the edge of the box and on the edge of each other. It's not, it's not going to, it's not like people are gonna line up their treat holder. You just kind of want it to, to be as straight as possible so that when you're looking at it, it's not, it's not crooked and that a piece that's not, it's like peeking out backwards. If you were making this out of DSP, the DSP would be on two different sides. So if you don't want to have a, like a, a bold color stick it out the other way. So in this case, I just eyed it up. Then you set it down and you see now that it's flat. And so, so even though this is, this is still my curved thing because I want to cut off my pretty die cuts. Threw a little piece of lemon over top of it, but I have the flatness of the box. Hello, Mary. I have the flatness of the box down there that is keeping this from rocking. Um, let's see, what, what, what can I fit in here? Can I fit one of these mini things in here? Uh, this is a Butterfinger. I don't really like chocolate bars. My favorite chocolate bar is actually an Eat More, which doesn't have any chocolate in it. But there are a few chocolate bars that I do like. And I will tell you that Butterfinger is one of them because anything with peanut butter is good. So yes, I actually can put um, one of the little mini chocolate bars. It's at a bit of an angle, but it still fits in there. So there's my little like place setting treat holder. Thank you something. Uh, what did I do with my sentiments? I put them behind me. Okay, so <laughs> my fingers are working. Let's see. I'm trying to get. I'm trying to grab the one that says Happy Birthday. Uh, in this case, I'm not actually going to fasten it on because it's not even the right color. But you still could. I decorated this up a fair bit. You probably could still find somewhere. You can put it in front of the lemon to put on a little tag if you wanted. But frankly, the way this one is decorated with the little tea bag, you can you can also stamp on the tea bag or use the slightly bigger one. Um, I don't actually think you need to put a sentiment of any kind on it. I think it's just a, a standalone cutie. What did I do with my bunny? Oh yeah, see, I didn't put a sentiment on this one either. You could have put Happy Easter, but I didn't. So there we go, tea bag. So this, the same way that I put this box in between here is the exact same way that I did it on, on whichever shape I used and whichever shape you're going to use. 
right? Oh, are you, this, this teacup die, oh my God. I wasn't gonna get it because I have a similar one already. I love it so much. And I, part of the reason I love it is because of the lemon die and this overlay die that goes on the teacup and the, oh, I just love the way it looks. Okay, so there's that one. Okay, so now that I've shown you 10 of those different things, I'm gonna show you one last one. Oh yes, there was my other one. I knew I had a different shape, like my little apple. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you one last project. I'm going to show you the evolution of the project. And then on Thursday, I'm gonna show you how, I, I kind of teased you with it on the, I think I just called it a chocolate tower. This is a Christmas one because all the other ones are in a different box, but this is the Christmas tower or chocolate tower, sorry, that opens up and that holds four of the Ferrero Rocher or four lint or four whatever. Um, so I will show you how to make that one on Thursday because I don't want to cram those instructions in into five minutes. But, okay, so this is how the next one came about. You will remember maybe that I made these snowman hot chocolate hats, right? So snowman hat in there is a thing of hot chocolate, a little tube of mini marshmallows and a little candy cane to stir and eat with, right? So I had made these and I thought, well, these are adorable, um, fun to make. And what other, what other concoctions can I make? So then, uh, I was going to say Easter, St. Patrick's Day, I made um, leprechaun hats. So little shamrocks, little um, rainbows. In this case, I had a hell of a time finding the chocolate covered, um, I will tell you in a second, Mary, uh, finding the chocolate covered gold coins, which is what I wanted to put in them. I found plastic ones. So I ended up using some of the Ferrero Rocher just because they were gold. And in the other ones that I gave to people as treats, um, I actually put in Lucky Charms bars. So they're like Lucky Charms cereal made into a Rice Krispie square, basically. Um, so I've actually been able to fit a Lucky Charms in and then I stuck some Ferrero Rocher in front. This is just so things don't fall out, like jammed in some coins. So then I made them into this. So then I was talking to the lovely Donna. Um, who is in the um, Red Hat Club. And I thought, these could be made into red hats. It just sort of, you know, sometimes you don't think of it till you see someone. I was like, oh yeah. I had the idea that you could also make these into um, like steampunk hats, just kind of make them black, rough them up a bit, put that cool um, netted ribbon that we have, like tied around and just kind of rough them up a bit. You could probably make a steampunk hat out of them as well. So that I was into the hats. I thought I could make like Easter bonnets out of them make them a little more shallow. Um, eh, I haven't actually got to try that yet. And I'm not, I will see if it works or not. It probably does. But then the more shallow you make it, the harder just to figure out what goes in it. So then I thought I want to make like mugs, coffee mugs, teacups. So then I made this guy and I don't like it. <laughs> I think it looks funny. So what I did though, and to answer Mary's question of how high, when you make these when you make these mugs, this is a two inch strip, right? So I made a two inch strip and I put it on. So this is the same base and I'm gonna show you in a minute how to make the other one. So this is the same two inch strip and the base and then I just added a handle and it matters which way you wrap the paper. I'll show you on this one. I, I guess if you wanted the handle going the other way, it wouldn't matter, but I wanted the handle on the right side. So you have to wrap it the right way. Otherwise the seam is like glaringly facing you, but I mean, it's, it's kind of cute, but it just, it didn't look like I wanted it to. I also wanted to put in it a thing of coffee or a thing of tea and some cookies. So when I put them in this mug, it looked ridiculous. <laughs> uh, I got, I, I asked somebody else cause I thought, ah, oh, maybe I'm just being, but no, somebody else said the same thing. It's just too big. So this is what I wanted to put in it. This was not working for me. So this two inch strip works very well for hats. And like I said, if you're making an Easter bonnet, maybe you would make it, um, I don't know if I'd cut it directly in half to an inch, but maybe an inch and a quarter. And you could make the same kind of like flat surface, put the hat, put a little bow, put a flower, it would probably work. But I was determined to make the thing work. So then I had the idea of, well, maybe instead of cardstock too, because this was like, I just grabbed whatever cardstock was on the desk to make the prototype, <laughs> which is what I tend to do. And, and I'm just like, it's too, it's too plain. Like on the other ones, it works with the way the hats are, but for the mug, no. So then I decided to try DSP. So then we hit on the answer <laughs> because this mug I absolutely love. So then the question was, is DSP gonna be strong enough? So I did have an idea for how to fix it. 
this is actually the prototype. This was the first one I made and it works. And I will tell you the couple things that I learned as I went. This one got dirty, unfortunately. Um, so it won't actually be given out. But you notice on this one, I, I wrapped the paper the right way. Oops, pull that down a little bit. So now the seam is pointing backwards. The mug handle is still stuck in there, but you don't see it. So it does matter how you do it. So I'm gonna show you very quickly what I did with this one, because it's basically the same thing. These come together quite quickly. Um, what you need for this one though, is, well, and here's what, here's what makes a difference. Okay, so I, I'm using these little plastic bits, which are our embellishment holders. Sorry, I digress, but this is an important part when you're making it. So these are the new ones, right? They tend to be fairly skinny. Let me close that up. They're only half an inch thick. So with these ones, right? And then you take them apart and I'm using basically the two pieces of them. It doesn't, one's slightly bigger than the other. It doesn't really matter, but I'm using these to give some stability to the bottom. So you have something to like kind of pick it up and hold it with. You can't really, I mean, you can, you can pick this thing up by its handle, but it's kind of floppy. So it's not really meant to be that way, but you still want to be able to pick it up and have some, some like base to it, which is these. So this is slightly bigger. When we used to get the older ones that were a bit deeper, they were slightly smaller around. So an eight inch piece of paper was the perfect size to wrap around. For these ones, you actually need eight and a half because I find with eight, it doesn't quite close. And then that's not pretty. But you can also, because I save everything, you can also use the inside of a roll of blue dots. Now this one, um, I think it was seven and a half, was enough to wrap around because this thing is a lot smaller in diameter. So depending on what you're using as your base, and this one was basically just that, and then I glued a piece on the bottom. For this one, I didn't even bother with the piece on the bottom. I thought I could, but then I'm like, eh, do I need to? Who's looking at the bottom? Um, if you wanted to, I guess you could put a white piece on the bottom and write on it. So, so for this one though, I'm going with eight and a half because I'm using this piece. So because I don't, I think I've told you this story before. I don't like to stick the arm out on this thing, mostly because I never have room on my desk. So this is a 12 inch piece of paper and I want eight and a half. So I need to get rid of three and a half. <laughs> And the reason I left this all together is because don't lose this piece of paper. It's important. Okay, so there's my eight and a half. Which before I go to all this trouble, it does not look like it's eight and a half. Oh, yes, it is. Okay. And then I want this to be three and a half. Now, that was just that was just a fluke, quite honestly, the first time when I did it. And I absolutely love this paper. This paper's from the tulip paper. You wouldn't be able to tell that. This is the backside is one of the cloud versions. I absolutely love this paper. Um, you could use whichever DSP you wanted for it, and I think it would work. So this is three and a half, and then I'm going to score a half an inch on the top. So when I just when I decided to try the DSP, that was my thought was, hmm, am I going to be able to, like, is it going to sustain having something in it and holding it up? So what I thought to do was to fold over. So you can kind of see if you look that I did fold it over. Um, and just that little bit of extra DSP at the top is enough to make that a fairly, fairly um, solid cup. I think if I had just left it like, well, one, it also gives it a nicer edge, but if I had just left it like this, I don't know if it would have, I think it would have, it would have got a little beaten up over time, but, and whether it's just the fold alone or the fact that I'm putting adhesive between the fold, I don't know, but this did make it, uh, <laughs> Rascal's playing in the hallway and I can hear him. He's distracting me. Um, I did make it, it did make it a lot more sturdy. That was the word I was looking for. So my cup now is going to be three inches tall, right? The finished product is going to be three inches tall. That extra half an inch was just to give it some durability, right? So I folded my half, I, I put my little tear and tape in between. Now we're gonna, we're gonna glue this on the bottom. We're gonna prep all the pieces and then we're gonna assemble it because we're not quite putting it together yet. So I'm gonna put tear and tape along the bottom. I find this the easiest. You can certainly use the white glue, but white glue is messy. And then I'm just gonna lift a little bit of the end of this up so I can put another piece of tear and tape going the other direction. And then I'm gonna put it back down again afterwards so I don't stick it to where I don't want to, but. There we go. A little bit of tear and tape this way. Ooh, cutting her close on time. Let's see how I do. Okay. 
So this is what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this around, but we're not doing it right off the bat because this time the difference between this and the hats is this time before we wrap it around. Okay. I'm thinking, why is this fighting me so hard? Here's one other little trip tip for you. Um, you don't have to, you don't have to um, curve it very much, but if you curve it a little, especially on the edge that has the, uh, the um, tear and tape on it will have just a little bit less resistance when you go to put it together. <laughs> okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to wrap it around the bottom here. Oh, did I put it on the wrong side? Yes, I did. Okay, I actually should have done this first because I did put. So if you wanted to make a left handed mug, I did this correctly because you want to have the tear and tape which I'm, I'm just gonna leave the tear and tape there and we're gonna be fine with it because I'm gonna stick the handles to it anyways, but I didn't need, I didn't need the tear and tape to be quite the entire length of it. Um, you want the tear and tape to close this. Let me put it on so I can make, make more sense of it because I know that what I'm, what I'm about to say is not gonna make sense if I don't show you visually. There we go. So we'll do that on both sides now. So I wanna I want tear and tape this to the bottom and then I need to tear and tape this side together. But I want to make it, I want my handle on the right. This is so much easier when you're not, when you actually just stick it down. Um, so I want, my, I want my handle to stick on the back of this. I'm going to pop it out because I, like I showed you earlier, if we do it the other way, you have a nasty seam. If you do it this way, you have a nice seam. So this is where I want my tear and tape. Oops, not sure what happened there. Boom. All of a sudden, I have lost all focus. <laughs> huh. There we go. What's going on there? Let's see if that comes back. I have no idea what happened. I, was, I didn't touch anything. Um, OK, so if you want your hand, oh, there we go. If you want your handle on the right-hand side, make sure you wrap it this way. If you want your handle on the left-hand side, make sure you wrap it this way. So you're tucking your handle in behind, OK? So we put our tear and tape on these two sides. Okay, so for future reference, <laughs> if your handle's on the right side, then your tear and tape is also on the right side. Okay, now here's the other thing that we need though, is we need a handle. So pick a punch, I'll take the one size smaller. You could do this with dies. I'm doing, I'm doing punches because um, it's just easier. I'm going to make this live as easy as possible. So pick a punch that is smaller than the width of your cup. <laughs> so in this case, it's the two and a, what do I have? Two and a quarter. I could make it smaller, but I like the idea of the bigger handle. Um, quite honestly, it's because when I pick a mug, oh, hello, Nancy. When I pick a mug, um, like in real life, I like a nice big handle. I like to be able to fit three fingers in it and have enough room that my fingers are not touching my very hot tea. I am very particular about mugs. So that's what we're doing. So make sure that it's wider. Now here's how I made the handle. I folded the piece of paper in half, the piece that was left over. This is the piece I trimmed off. And this is not, it doesn't matter um, if it's perfect or not. This is, I guess it would matter if you had a pattern on it, but in this case, no, I'm just making a handle. And, and the fold doesn't matter. I'm not keeping the fold. I'm just using it to make it easier. So. In order to make this handle, go in and cut your first, like the inside of your handle first. Because if not, you're trying to, you're trying to cut the outside or you're trying to cut out the middle of a floppy piece of paper. So when, if you're ever using a punch and punching like the same piece of paper twice, always do the smaller one first. It's like, it's like two circles. If you have two circle punches, cut out the middle circle and then cut out the outside circle to make an O. Otherwise you have a small circle that you're trying to now center. Way easier to do it this way. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, I don't know, this much, which I have to make enough to fold over. So I'm going to go in this much. And this was total trial and error. And there is no right or wrong. It's whatever size handle you want. Now you have this lovely piece of DSP to use for something else because you don't actually need it. And then go back in again. That's what I did the last time. I'm going to actually do it. You can do it with the same, you can do it with the same punch or you can do it with two different sizes. I'm going to do it with two different sizes so I get a thicker 
a thicker piece. So now I'm going to go in again, and I'm just going to try to line it up and make it like the, the ends of this is are going to get buried. So don't worry about that too much. This is you just want to make sure that this is somewhat even, which it looks to be. And then whoop, now we're cutting it. And yes, you do need to make the sound effects because it makes the punches work better. So boop, there it goes. Um, I don't know how I managed to do that and not cut this piece off. When I did it the last time, I ended up cutting that piece off. Okay, so now I have a handle. Now, because I am that determined and prefer my tear and tape to white glue, I'm just putting a little bit of tear and tape here. And you do see that it it, uh, it sticks off. The, it, it doesn't quite fit, but that doesn't matter because all you have to do is once you take the paper off is just fold it over. Okay, so I'm just gonna do this it's because if not, the handle's just gonna flop all over the place, right? So there, now we have a handle. That's all I did. Two punches. And what you wanna do is on the same piece that you're using um, to close the thing, you're gonna, here, we'll do it the other way. We're gonna put our handle in, right? I'm going to put it afterwards, though. So this is where this handle is going to go. So I'm going to start with this one. And sorry, because I know I'm 701. I was trying not to be done for seven. OK, ignore this piece of tear tape. That was my mistake, but I'm just going to leave it on there now. OK, so I get this started. And then I find it easier to leave it on the table. And it doesn't matter if you're making a hat, a cup, whatever. I find this the same. And then, because this way, oops. You can kind of push your paper as you go. So I'm putting a little bit of pressure on the top. So I'm getting it even on the bottom. So I'm not going to have any gaps on the bottom. And all I'm doing is rolling it around, whatever, whatever my base is. There we go. And then give it a little squish. So this is now stuck to my base. And in that case, I was a little bit crooked, but I can just push down on it. So now, like I said, if you want, and depending what you're using, you might want to cover this up. I don't, I think if somebody decides to turn out this over and look and they see this, it's not the end of the world. So I didn't put anything in. You can also put a piece of paper in from the other side. Um, if I wanted to, I could put this in. I'm pretty sure this is a two and a quarter is what worked the last time. Let's see if I can, this is why you don't try to punch small pieces of paper out. Nobody, nobody's um, hung up yet, so I'm going to assume you'll stick with me just to see the end, but okay, that, that's too small. Um, I think I now have it stuck in my punch. Uh, this, this is, I, don't have, I don't have the right color piece of paper to put in here. Well, yellow it is. <laughs> okay, so you could just do this as well. I wasn't planning to do that, so I didn't have my paper ready. I'm pretty sure this was two and a quarter is what I used the last time. So if you didn't want to see it, you could also just drop in a piece of paper. Uh, and the answer would be wrong. That would be two and a half. So that it goes like this. Here's the thing. If you try to, if you try to put your paper in and put like glue on here or, or dimensionals or anything to hold this piece in, you're going to see them when you flip it over and it's going to look worse than leaving it empty. So if you put a piece in, just pick the right size, which like I said, in the case of these little containers, it should be actually two and a half. Um, and it will just kind of hold itself in there. I think it'll be tight enough. And then, yeah, you're looking at a piece of cardstock instead. So I have no problem with looking at the bottom. Okay, so now, now this is where the cup. So this is now the front of my cup. This is where the seal is. And this is where I'm going to stick my um, handle. So now we're going to peel this piece of paper off because now we're ready. And I'm just going to lay the handle down into the tear and tape. And I'm going in, I don't know, quarter inch. And just because I am extra paranoid to make sure it's as secure as possible. I'm putting two little bits of, of tear and tape over top of the handles. Um, I don't think that this little bit of paper in here would take away so much from the tear and tape that I already put down that it wouldn't hold together. But I don't want the handles. If somebody does decide to try to pick it up by the handles, I don't want uh, I don't want the whole thing falling apart. And I just stuck my, there we go. I just stuck my finger in the other tear and tape. Wait, I'm, this is looking way more difficult than it has to be because I'm trying to do it like on screen. When you do it in real life, it's like zip, 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 and you're done. So um, 
don't be deterred. It's a fun project. It's actually easier than I'm making it look. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to roll this over and I'm for sure going to leave it sitting down this time because I'm going to close it up. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that my top edges line up. You will not notice the bottom as much as you will notice the top if you are crooked. Now, when you make the hats, as I have done before, I always put the seam in the back when I'm making the hats, right? So if you're making the hat and you have a seam like this, if you're slightly off, you can just kind of trim it and hide your mistakes. <laughs> but in this case, I have folded the DSP over. So I don't want to be trimming this DSP off because I folded it over. Okay, so now we have our cup and you'll see that the handle is, is like sticking out this way. All I did was fold it back on itself. And that was enough to make it stand out. So there we have a cup. This cup handily fits coffee, cookie, lint ball, and some Tic Tacs. And it fits very nicely in there. Uh, like I said, I have honey, tea bags, cookies, and a chocolate as well, or Tic Tac, or I don't know, something that I'm going to make a tea version of this. Um, and that's how easy it is. I'm going to give you one more tip before I go, because I, I know I'm already over time. I apologize. Um, you can decorate it with whatever you want. The, the thing you want to remember, though, is if you are using um, a longer uh, piece on it, like the sentiment, it's either going to stick off one end, and, and I purposely left it like this, or you have to like stamp your sentiment, use your bone folder to curl it, and then make sure you have either dimensionals or tear and tape on the end, on the middle, on the end, because you're basically trying to wrap it around. If you don't, it's going to stick out a bit, and I'm fine with it sticking out here, and I'm, I'm even fine. I can pull this back up a little bit. I'm even fine with it sticking out flat this way, but you do need a bit of a curve in the middle and a bit of adhesive. If you're, if you're going to have it stick out like this, then put two dimensionals in the middle or put, you know, good seal or whatever to get the contact because you're, you're putting it around a curve. It doesn't seem like much of a curve, but when I first put it on, I just put two dimensionals. Can I put them farther apart? And this thing kept popping out and the one kept pulling itself completely off. So it was that it was only attached by one. So you definitely want to make sure you have a nice good <laughs> Sorry, as I'm trying to talk to you, um, Rascal is licking my ankle um, <laughs> and I'm super ticklish. Um, you want to make sure you have a good chunk of this middle secured um, just because of the curve. Otherwise, your label is going to keep popping off. And then in this case, I just used our lovely bow punch that carried over um, that has, uh, I don't know what these are supposed to be, buds and leaves in the same punch, right? So just add a little bit of decor to it. But yeah, just make sure you curve and secure the thing in the middle or all the way across it, or you're going to have issues with your label. Ta-da! OK, thank you, Nancy. And because because you might, and just in case you decide you don't want to watch the whole thing, I'm going to show you something. Because as soon as I saw it, I was flipping through the catalog earlier. And as soon as I saw it, I actually thought of you. So we have all sorts of punches and stuff that will work. And when I show you these first little treat holders with the tulips and the bunnies, Tombstones for Thanksgiving, or Thanksgiving, tombstones for Halloween. I guess tombstones for Thanksgiving, if that's how you roll. I would suggest tombstones for Halloween. Okay, so we have our mug. We have our little teacup that we made. We have our Ferrero Rocher tulip that we made. We have our other teacup that we made. We have our thank you apple for the teachers. We have our little Tic Tac tulips. And we have our Easter Bunny. Two looks. What else did I make? Did I make anything else? Nope. There we go. Many, many versions of many, many treats. And I ran out of time, so I'm not going to show you, but I will finish it up and add it in the pictures. I did make the same thing. I made this box that I was going to affix. This, I love these dies. These dies just retired, but I don't care. I'm keeping them. Um, so I'm going to make the same thing, but I'm going to make it more just of a square box. And on the back, I'm going to put this other little square so that you can write on it. And I'm just going to turn it into a square treat holder and put the same thing. I think this will be wide enough to put in a tea bag and cookies. Ta -da. I was having lots of fun. I could make treat holders till the cows come home. I love making them so much. So there you go. There's your variety of treat holders for you and a huge mess on my desk. And thanks for hanging in for the extra long time that it took me. Um, tombstones for everything. Well, there you go, Nancy. I, I see. I, I think they're cute. And I think... Uh, I mean, if somebody's, I, I actually saw, um, I actually saw a retirement card that said quitter. Um, but, you know, when people hit birthdays that end in a zero, people always make fun of their age. 
tombstones for those birthdays. I mean, as long as it's the right person with the right sense of humor, and it's not at a, an inconsiderate of time when somebody maybe have just had a tombstone. Yes, I have the sense of humor that I could take that. So tombstones, uh, like I said, whales, I think you could use the whale punch. Um, what are some of the new punches? The ladybug punch. Uh, I, think there's, I think there's just so many things you could do. Thank you very much, Donna. Um, so many things you can do. And these nice little bits, these, this is just like a little, hey, I spent, I spent a few minutes thinking of you and making you something nice. That's really what this is. Um, it's amazing how excited people get over just the tiny little thing. Like it does not have to be a huge box of something, a tiny little thing that they can sit. And when I made these for people at work, I would go back years later and the little treat holder, it might be empty, but the treat holder was sitting there, right? Like, I think people just appreciate knowing that, you know, somebody thought of them, somebody cared. Um, I can't get over how much I like this apple. And I wish my son was younger and would let me send more stuff to school because he gets, he gets annoyed now that he's a middle schooler when I send stuff to the school. But anyways, there's your treat holders. I'm going to let you go so you don't have to stay on here all night. Now go over and watch Tamara's thing. I know she's uh, on holidays, but she did, she did uh, schedule something so it will pop up and you can be entertained by Tamara. So thank you everybody for showing up. I will put little pictures and measurements and whatever I can in my blog for on Saturday. I will finish last Saturday's blog that as if you were here at the beginning I mentioned, I could just completely forgot about because I got it about half done and then got busy doing the farmer's market stuff and forgot to finish it. I will finish that up today or tomorrow and uh, you'll have dimensions for the pinwheel card. And then this stuff will be in this week's blog. So have a lovely week, everybody. And uh, I will be back on Thursday to make the chocolate tower, should you be so interested. Take care. Thanks for hanging in.